Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming here. You know that we get a lot of questions regarding clean language and how to use it in business, in family, in schools, in, in coaching, art, in coaching, in sports, in therapy, in therapy. How do? What is the learning journey? Uh, do I need to certificate and why? And with whom I study? What are the ways? So all these good questions are deserved to be answered. I will do my best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. And welcome to Moscow. So, where do we begin? Mm -hmm. let's, let's start with business, since mm -hmm. I know that you are active in bringing clean language into business in Moscow. Let's start with business. What would you like to know? So, the first question, if I have no idea about clean language, but I heard some of it, so what first thing I need to know about clean language? In the business context. In the business context. I think, I think in many ways it's best to start with the, with the why. Why is it good to get clean into organisations? And I think simply it's because organisations and businesses are series of interactions between real people. And the quality of attention that people pay to each other means do we make the most of our interaction? Do we get the most out of it? Can we turn problems into outcomes and action? Or am I not really listening to you? Have I got an agenda? Hmm. Have I arrived in conflict? So the quality of attention that we pay to one another is absolutely crucial to making sure that we make the most of the people in our business. And what clean language does is it really trains your attention. It trains you to listen carefully to what the other person said because if you're being clean, it means that you can only ask about what that person has already said. And so to do that, you better know what they already said. You have to have paid attention to them. You can't be pretending to listen until you can make your point mm. because you can't ask a clean question. So essentially, it's you get high quality attention. Clean questions teach you to pay high quality attention and therefore your interactions are more are higher value. So let me check. What I heard is all about attention, the way we pay attention to each other and the questions we ask is not only about what has been said without assumptions mm -hmm. and then it will be high quality of interaction. Yeah. Can you give an example? I'll give you a real business example. So we have a, a lovely um, international company based in the UK and we were invited in to have a look um, they're a fast-moving goods company, so a retail get the get the um, stuff onto the supermarket and get it off the shelves. So we went in and we observed with a team of clean facilitators. We observed their meetings when they would have research, um, product, finance, branding, uh, packaging all together, and we sit and observe their meetings. And what we noticed was that they very rarely gave each other feedback. They very rarely asked questions that the person could answer in depth. So f instead they would say things like, is the packaging ready? No. Okay, what's going to happen? Oh, we're going to push it back for another week. Okay. Um, what's happening with the branding? Oh, it's in hand. Okay, when will it be ready? A couple of weeks. Okay. Um, with finance, finance would say, can you take um, one pence off the price? Oh, no, no, we can't do that. Okay, why not? Well, it'll, um, it, it means that um, the profits won't work. Oh, okay, we can't do that. E everything was a yes, no, or short-term answer. And lots of the agreements that they had made in the last meeting had not been met. It was a 50-50 about whether agreement had been met or not. So we went in and we taught the team clean feedback, that is how to give feedback that's evidence-based. That means that you don't get to just judge the person, but you say, I'm seeing this, this, and this has happened, I'm, and I'm interested, why, why is it happening? Um, so we taught the very basic clean questions, we'll go into the details of them in a minute. Just three days we taught people, three days of training, and then we came back in nine months later, because with clean language you're always looking for a good systemic change. We came back in and it was just very different. So it was a different meeting, 
and somebody had said, okay, we're, we're working with bleach. So where are we up to? And somebody said, oh, packaging, what happened? And packaging said, oh, we're not, we're not ready. They said, oh, what, what happened? So oh, well, the person in charge of it is sick. And somebody else in the meeting said, oh, what's your policy when somebody's sick? He said, we don't really have one. And finance said, oh, well, we have a policy where if somebody's sick, there's always a second in command to take it over. They said, okay, where did that policy come from? Oh, my, my line manager developed it. Okay, is it possible packaging for us to develop a line, for, for you to speak to your line manager and develop a similar thing? Yeah, yeah, I could do that. Do you need anything? What, do you, what support or resources do you need to do that? To be honest, could I get finance? Could you get your, your um, line manager to come to the meeting? Yeah, I can do that, no problem. So each problem was discussed across the expertise of the group and then turned into an outcome and an action. And there wasn't drama. There wasn't blame or nastiness. Mm. It was quite exciting. They'd say, um, oh, we could really lose some money on this product. We could, we'd like to take it down a bit. Has anyone got any ideas? We'd go to the middle of the group. And then people would start to contribute because they knew that they would be listened to. Because people, the rule was people had to ask a question before they moved on to the next point. Um, and the other thing that happens in, a, in real life is that the group starts to agree rules, not in a, uh, a schoolyard kind of way, not this is the way we play this game, but just in a more um, emergent way. So for example, in this company, they agreed no more than a tenth of your time can you talk about problems. So I could say, oh, this, is, this product's never gonna work because um, the research hasn't been good enough. And the group won't allow me to just stay like that. The group will then say, so when it won't work, what would you like to have happen? And if I say yet again a problem, well, there's nothing I can do. It's out of my hands. The group won't allow that. They'll say, okay, it's out of your hands. It won't work. What would you like instead? And if you don't know yet, you need to be quiet. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a disallowing of whinging, moaning, blaming. And the, the culture of the group was, what's happening, what needs to happen, what can we do? Hmm. So what I'm hearing, there's no drama, so there's an emerging way to deal with issues. Mm -hmm. So And it's a training the attention. Yeah. So I want a question about the drama. So why does it happen, you think? Drama? Yeah. Why do we deal with that? It, family, business, in different occasions. And what is drama, actually? Well, drama is whenever you're not getting what you want. Hmm. And instead of moving to inquiry and action, you decide to either feel sorry for yourself, like victim, or oh, I was going to give them that idea, but no one will listen to me. Or, yeah, well, it needs to change, but we haven't got the resources. So this is a victim position. Or you can go persecutor. You should have done that. That's not my fault. They should have done that. Well, I tried, but they, they wouldn't get involved. That's a persecutor. It's not me. Mm. You're to blame. Or there's rescuer, which happens so much in meetings. And it's, the I think, one of the most difficult positions on the drama triangle. And that is where, um, I don't know, you ask a colleague, oh, packaging. We had an agreement it would be ready this week. What happened? And I go, oh, they, they, had, a hard, they had a difficult time. You that know? person is sick, you know? Yeah, that person's sick. You shouldn't, this, it's not their fault. This is a rescuing position, which is where I step in and try and make things okay without any real inquiry. So, or a rescuer is also somebody, uh, maybe I see that my colleague isn't doing their job, um, but I'm frightened to tell somebody so I do their job for them, but then I'm always tired or my own job suffers. So drama are, is the places that people go when they're not going, getting what they want. And you mm. know it's drama because it, nothing's going to change. Mm. So if I'm victim and you say, oh, what do you, what do you want to do about it? I go, oh, there's nothing I can do. Mm. Or if I'm persecuted, it's not my fault. It's not me that needs to change. 
And the trouble with drama in a team is it just draws all of the goodwill and the life um, away from it. Yeah, sounds very familiar, actually. And I'm noticing the roles I'm playing. Yeah. So I like to save. You're a rescuer. Yeah, I'm a rescuer. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I feel very uncomfortable when somebody starts to prosecute others. So I just and want the trouble with the rescuer mm. is they can be really irritating for lots of other people. Yeah. Because you know you're being a rescuer and not a facilitator when people push back at you. Mm. So a rescuer is not invited. So I want to be really clear about that. Sometimes people get those mixed up. And I know that you're becoming, you already were, but you're becoming a very good a skilled facilitator. And that's different. That's where you have to be interested and go, okay, shall I tell you what I'm noticing? I'm noticing that so-and-so is angry with packaging. Um, so-and-so said this, packaging said this. Let me just check. What would you all like to have happen? So shall I tell you what I'm noticing? Yeah. We're talking about training attention. Mm -hmm. The cases in business, how it works and the drama people make. And I'm very interested now, um, so how do we train attention that if I would be a manager, and I'm actually a manager, I am obviously the, um, managing the project on Coriparo, and we have team which is expanding now, and we have a partner, Sabina. Uh, so, so how can I train my attention, attention of Sabina, yours or the young team we have? So, which clean, clean questions mm. are the core. So the first thing is clean questions. The f that's the first thing you can learn. How do you ask a question of yourself or of somebody else that doesn't have an assumption in it? And this is because it stills you. For a moment, you have to stop. So, for example, think about a time when you've been in drama. One that you're happy to share with others. Okay. Got it? Mm. So when you're in drama like that, what let you know that you were in drama? Um, I have a strange feeling here. And also sometimes in my head. So I have particular feelings uh, here and here. So you've got a feeling here and here. So it's a feeling here. What kind of feeling is it? Oh, it's kind of something moving, mm -hmm. it's like kind of, not shaking, but like too many things are moving here. There's too many things are moving here, and what's happening here? It very much depends. Uh, sometimes it's my, my head is really burning, like... <laughs> or it's just too many things, like I'm really overwhelmed. Okay. But it's a similar feeling, like my, it's a heat in my brain. So if you think about this response, this is a typical drama response. Mm. So I'm not unique, you're saying? Not special. Yeah. Everyone, we will all have, and that, that is the beauty of it, we will all have a completely idiosyncratic mm. way of responding to drama. So this will be unique to, Sve to Sveta, mm. but also, it's also quite typical. It's gut and head. Mm and she'll be in a little bit of fight, flight or freeze. Mm. Which one do you go into? Um, if I'm tired and if I get too many things, then for example, some of my team members come and say, you know, I have a very good idea, da, 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 and we're in the middle of the uh, difficult workshop. I want to fly, like, please go away. Um, but if they insist, and they say, you have to look, it's very important, and I can't, then I just really like, <laughs> shut up, <laughs> go away. So, the first thing is to accept that we, we have these responses. Do you know, we all do. They're our survival responses. So you're saying that I'm okay? You're probably okay. And it's ve that is so important. You have to be okay with the idea that you're not okay. Hmm. And that's what's important in the team as well. We have to accept that sometimes we're in the wrong state. So it's a little bit about acceptance that it's, it's, it's fine to have these feelings. Mm -hmm. So whenever I'm not managing things and something happens, that is just okay. That's just, that's just you mm. being not okay. Mm. And then you have a responsibility mm. to share that model with your colleagues, with your mm. team, and to also share with them what is the best thing they can do when you're like that? How can they know you're like that? And what's the best thing they can do? And it's all about clean questions. 
and that's you can share the model with them. You ask yourself clean questions or get a colleague to do it. The model, the trauma. A, a model, like a model of ah, what I'm yeah. fitting. When I'm when I'm in drama, I'm I feel like this here. I feel mm. like this here. I'm overwhelmed, mm -hmm. and I look like this. And then I might work with you a bit longer and say, and when you're like this, you're like what? Um, like I would be a flower, which is uh, has a not very thick. Um, I don't know how you call English it. English stem. Stem, and then the 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 upper part of the flower is in fire, so it's shaking. Okay, so you can share that with your colleagues mm. and say, when you see me like this, and I, I can ask you. When I see you like this, what would I see in here that would let me know that you were flower on fire with not very thick stem? I will not look into your eyes. You will see me looking around and you definitely will see that like that something inside starts and stops, starts and stops. And what would you like to have happen in that moment? What would you like to what would you like me to do? Um it would be it would be good if you said tell me, you know, shall I tell you what I'm noticing? It, it seems for me that you in that particular state. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What, what, what happens right now? What, just, what is happening? And also, if you ask me what support and resources support you need. Resources, yeah. That's very helpful. Then I can tell you. Yeah. So in a team, this is how you start. Mm -hmm. You start with inqu inquiry. Just get together and say, when you're working at your best, so this is you at your worst, mm -hmm. we could find out how... Sabina is at her worst, how um, another colleague, a member of the team, how I am like at my worst. Well, okay, we can find out some different models and then we can ask each other some questions. What, would, what do each mm. of us need? And then we can ask when we're at our best. We're like what? You're like what? You're like what? What are you like? What do each of us need to keep ourselves at our best? The simplest thing, if every team did that mm. in the world or every family, it's just very simple models for when I'm at my worst, I'm like this. And really listen to the different way that you experience anxiety or overwhelm or anger. For me, when I'm at my worst, when I go into drama, mm. it's that I'm stretched too thin. My attention's here, my attention's here, my attention's here, and there's nothing left here. And so you only have to do something a little bit wrong, just a little bit, and it feels like you've hurt me. Mm. And so I could go into attack. Right. Obviously, you didn't do it. You mm. didn't stretch me too thin. You were just the last person. Yeah. And so knowing that, actually, my team said it's not okay with us when you shout like that. It's not okay. It really upsets us. So we, we the the um, solution wasn't at the prob at the that stage. We had to come back and back and back and say. What do we all need to make sure that Caitlin doesn't get stretched too thin? Mm. Because actually it was never going to be acceptable for me to behave like that at work. So, so some, some people's dramas have to stop. You cannot have that be behaviour in a meeting because it's, it puts everyone else into drama. Mm. So do you understand there's some different, um, different levels of drama behaviour? So what I'm hearing that we, uh, there is a drama from time to time and the different levels. So, and as a teams, we can't stop that. Mm -hmm. For that, the first step would be to train attention, to train attention to myself, myself. to understand my own conditions and to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. And then to train the team to deal with that, with the simple questions. You start out there and from there, the team can do all sorts of extraordinary things. Because if you think about what we're doing is we're putting uh, an idea into the center mm. of a team of professionals mm. and we're learning to really pay attention to how each of us thinks about it but you can put all sorts of creative ideas in there and create a network of intelligence around it so when we've seen teams that have really learned this they, they've then gone recruitment how do we recruit people okay let's just think about it if we were going to recruit people just the way we'd like to it would be like what and they have the question and then they all contribute and then from that, they, des they design a really collaborative recruitment program and then they test it. And because they're used to now giving good feed, high quality, clean feedback, then they can test it and see, did it work? Was it useful? Was it not? 
So once a team has the basics in clean language, they become a self-modelling system. They can take any aspect of their experience and model it. That's the, uh, the long-term goal of taking this stuff into business. Thank <laughs> you.